rolls downhill. We all know what rolls downhill. Well, a full honey wagon is about to reach the bottom of the hill in D.C. It's being pushed by John McCain and General Robert Abrams, whose relationship will determine if Abrams gets another star. Before I go on into that, let me tell you about a man named Eddie Skolvik. He was a soldier in the U.S. Army during World War II. He was court-martialed for deserting. He wrote a letter to the Supreme Allied Commander, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, pleading for clemency. Eddie, home. The first soldier since the Civil War murdered for desertion. There were many American soldiers deserting in World War II, and Eddie was to be a lesson. I want to address the current situation with Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, who was being court-martialed for desertion. An estimate of 59,000 soldiers deserted the military during the 13 years of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. According to Christopher Harris, a reporter for World, a show called Coming Back on PBS, Facts and Figures with Wes Moore, states that one active suicide a day happens in the current wars. That's American soldiers. What's the matter with following the Uniform Code of Military Justice? Nothing, if we are involved with just and moral wars. World War II was a just war, but since they were not but since then, we've not had a just moral war, which means we should look at the Uniform Code of Military Justice. I believe that it has taken more American lives than the enemy. Add up the non-combat deaths, and you will see the code is more effective as a killing machine than ISIS. And that's not counting the 59,000 deserters. The other issue is how the government and military are behaving towards the high-ranking decision-makers whose worst offenses risk more lives than Eddie and Bo ever put at risk. As far as I know, there is little consequence for the devastating life decisions made by government and military leaders. When they screw up, the worst that can happen is being defrocked. We know what rolls downhill. There's an example of it. McNamara had 58,000 dead on his unjust Vietnam war list. Abu Ghraib in Iraq had a whole string of military leaders responsible, and only one ranking Lieutenant Colonel Stephen L. Jordan paid. The rest were low-ranking soldiers who paid for breaking the code. George Bush surrounded himself with a small army of attorneys to protect him from the consequence of approving waterboarding and other torture methods that broke the code. It's time to take a look at moral responsibility as needing to be part of true leadership in America today. If we go to war for moral reasons, then we should hold those government and military leaders who send our children to war to operate at the same moral standard as our children have to.